find the object with the skinned mesh animator and add child game object to it. Attach the interactive effect and follow the instructions. Choose the effect you want to use. Make sure that the read write option is enabled in the mesh importer inspector. The same thing goes when using the standard mesh renderer. The only difference here is that we are adding the game object with the interactive effect to the mesh itself. Adjust the sample count and set up the mask game object. Add materials to the material list and change its shader to one provided by the asset. You can choose between burn and smooth versions. Make sure to enable alpha clipping. If there are no errors in the inspector, click update and setup effect. You can change material settings and how they look in the material settings tab. The guide texture has major impact on the look of the effects. You can choose a guide texture from the textures library provided by the asset. Important thing to know is that you need to use the past material properties to VFX graph after changing any property of the guide texture. It's texture, tiling or strength. Now if you try to play the effect, nothing will happen. That is because you need to set up the interactive settings. This feature automatically controls the transform of the interactive mask. When the effect state is equal to zero, so the effect is off, the mask transform will be equal to the initial transform. And when we are playing the effect, the mask transform goes from the initial to final transform. You can change the mask type by choosing a different one in the interactive mask type setting. As you can see, now I am adjusting the position transform when the effect state is 0 and when the effect state is 1, so the initial position and the final position of the mask, on the start and on the end of the effect. You can easily change the particle effect by swapping the asset template to another one. Each effect has two set of settings, one called visuals, which is unique to each one of the effects, and one called adjustments, which is shared between all of the effects. All of the effects have correct world based scale by default. If your default mesh scale doesn't match real world metrics, you need to adjust the scale multiplier in the VFX graph. This statue is by default very big. If we divide the scale by 6, its size will be similar to our character reference. Because of that, we need to set the scale multiplier to 6. Now the particles are scaled correctly. If you are scaling a game object, you need to make sure that properties scale rate is adjusted correctly. As you can see, the smallest statue is three times smaller than the mid one, so the scale rate needs to be one third. The same goes with the biggest statue here. It's two times bigger than the middle one. 
and the property scale rate needs to be set to 2. Now the edge properties are scaled correctly. Without adjusting the scale rate, the edge would look the same no matter the scale of the object. If you do not want to create multiple materials for the same objects, you can use instance materials. You can adjust all properties of the interactive effects script via code in runtime. You can find multiple well-documented examples on how to use the effect via code. The last thing is the efficiency of the particle systems created with the VFX graph. All of the effects are ready to use out of the box, but it's always a good practice to make sure that the capacity of the VFX graph does not exceed the actual number of particles that are used. Also, if you are modifying the spawn rate multiplayer, make sure that there is enough capacity to hold all of the new particles.